for two reasons. One, it was stylish, and two, it was trouble-free. I mean, a Chevrolet was money in the bank. They never broke. And that's why the 55 Chevy is America's car. About 20 years later, another car company came along, and they stole that reputation from Chevrolet. We're talking about Honda. So don't take my word for it. I'm going to bring in a Honda expert, my friend Mike Cooley. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Good to see you. So is it safe to say, Mike, that Honda is the second coming of the 55 Chevy? I believe that this is America's car. It fits everybody's life. <laughs> you couldn't wait to say that, could you? So here's our premise. We're saying that the Honda Fit has replaced the 55 Chevy as America's car. Now, the 55 Chevy was known this was the move. You borrow Dad's car, you pick up your girl, find Lover's Lane, and get in the back seat. Have you done it? Have you been in the back seat? That I have. They even fold down. Look at you. I know. Look, come a little closer. We love Kim. Now stop rolling. We're going to go get in the back of this pit. Come on, Kim. Oh, boy. We're going to hear it now. I can already see the letters and emails. How dare you compare that little imported piece of crap with a Chevy icon. The 55 Chevy is the greatest car ever, blah, 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 blah. Let me tell you something. I can compare the two. You know why? Because I got a TV show. You don't. This is the Honda 600, the second coming of the 55 Chevy. Okay, so this is the Honda 600 engine. No, really, this is the entire engine. Sure, it's small, but it's powerful enough for this car. It's reliable, and it got something a small block Chevy never could. Gas mileage. And hey, it's roomy. Well, to the Japanese, it's roomy. All right, so an NBA player won't fit. But look, I'm six foot three, and I can get in here okay. You know, as long as nobody's chasing me, I can squeeze right in. Look, listen, I'm in, and I'm comfortable. But you're not going to believe this compared to America's car until you see me drive it. And that's what we're about to do. When Honda built this, they had no idea a 6'3 TV host was going to be driving it. Otherwise, I'm sure they'd have made it a little bigger. It's not that small. Uh, just think of it as a Honda Civic Nano. How many cars can you test the ground clearance merely by reaching down and touching the ground? That's perfect. That feature's got to be good for something. Speed bump. To me, it's a mountain. I'm getting 50 miles a gallon. Three carjackers are chasing me right now. And guess what? It's got a little power down there, yeah. I mean, it's only a 600cc twin, but that's plenty of power for a Honda. Motorcycle. See ya. I'm going karting. Okay. I'll admit it. Comparing this to the 55 Chevy is comparing apples to oranges. But hey, comparing 1955 to 1975 isn't really a fair comparison. I mean, we're talking two different eras. And if you were lucky enough to be around when the 55 Chevy was the in-car, good for you. If you were around when the 75 Honda was the in-car, well, uh, listen, be glad you didn't get a polyester interior, all right? We're going to stop it with the stupid comparison, so I don't want to hear the hate mail. But you got to give it to Honda for having the gall to bring this in and challenge Detroit. I mean, they challenged Detroit with this little car, and that's what makes it one of 101 cars you must drive. Well... Unless you're Shaquille O'Neal.